How was your day since mine was shit? Uh, my day is going well. I'm not gonna lie to you. What if I told you, Rat, you had to trade having a bad day for me to have a good day? That was the give and take that God decided on this morning. So it's like I thank you for your sacrifice. I mean, we have Zillion roaming. We fight this. Fuck you, Amumu, you fucking bastard. There we go. Well, the good news is we have a fed Darius, who's just stomping lane now. And then we also have a Victor who's gonna get fed in the scale. And then we, we have a late game Zillion too, so it's like... As long as I don't end, the game is over. Literally. Nice. Do you think the industrial and in, in, industrial revolution has been a positive or negative to the human race? I mean, it's led to a bunch of shit. Yeah, it's led to a bunch of shit that's awful. People living in cities, people having access to the internet, the degradation of family, the promotion of instant gratification, of treating. Things that were once sacred as like a commodity nowadays, you know. Where are you, Vic? It's like a zillion gonna rotate. What are your thoughts on the novel The Industrial Society and its future? I've never read it. But back when I'd read a bunch of like Red Pill and Black Pill forums, uh, they would always talk about the Industrial Revolution. So that's kind of like, and I'm sure they probably read that and that's how I like form the opinions I have on it. Lifespan going up 30 years. I mean, just because people live longer doesn't mean shit. I don't understand where people get this idea from. If a person lives longer, but they're depressed, let me give you an let me give you an example. Imagine there's a lady, right, and she finds her soulmate, the person she wants to live the rest of her life with, right, and she knows that after him she could never have anybody, right. And imagine she's like 40 years old, and then he dies when she's 45, right, and she lives to be 85. Do you think this person cares about their lifespan now? They just care about being happy while they're alive. So it's like, if the industrial revolution makes people depressed, sad, anxious, right? And it's like destroyed the way people feel, like, about all aspects of life, then who gives a fuck if they're living longer? Who gives a fuck if the lifespan's longer? You see what I'm getting at? Lifespan, who gives a fuck about it, you know? Lifespan means shit. It's a one-dimensional metric. That's all it is. Death isn't meant to be seen as a good thing. See, this is your guys' problem, though. You get so focused on the concept of death that you forget about life, right? So it's like, a person's gonna sit there and they'd be like, oh, I don't want to die. Okay, cool. So, would you... It's like, I'll, I'll give you guys an example. My dad had a cousin, Bobby. Bobby died of uh, lung cancer a few months ago I went to his funeral and this guy at the end of his life he was breathing out of an oxygen tank and the tank only lasted 15 minutes if it was unplugged so he couldn't even leave his room and there was one day where i was talking to my dad and i said why is he still alive and my dad looked at me and he said because he doesn't want to die. And Bobby was there and he was saying, it's not my time yet, I don't want to go. But it's like, what kind of life is that? And that's something I could never understand. I could never understand. It's one thing if you have the possibility of making it better, you know? But 
to be living a life just for the purpose of living and existing when there is genuinely nothing good to extract from it right even if there's one thing to extract from it it's not it's something right but i don't know like it's so weird to me you're telling me you wouldn't rather live 10 years less or 20 years less but have an existence that every day you're excited about waking up and you feel fulfilled and gratified instead of depressed anxious and like nervous all the time come on yolo isn't real you live every day but you only die once that's why you but it's not about embracing death it's just about acknowledging the fact that once you're dead you're dead and that's it right so it's about sitting there and being able to not embrace death but rather embrace life you see what i'm getting at it's not about embracing death it's about doing the opposite embracing life Fuck, I actually didn't get this here. I knew that my reds, my damage would have been enough to kill uh, Viego. That's why I le left it on my like alt combo, by the Capitalism is dependent on people dying unhappy. Come on. And then fucking communism is dependent on people living unhappy. That's like, dude. You just have to understand that there's no economic system or political system that's of any benefit to people. It will always be of only benefit to the people in power. Simple as that. And no matter how you spin it, there will always be people in power in every system. You have to understand that whatever system you choose to support, it isn't geared towards you. That's why I'm like not political. That's why I don't give a fuck about shit like that. Because once you start investing yourselves in politics, the only thing you can do is become depressed. Because at the end of the day, politics is never going to make you happy. Sure, you can say, but I'm becoming more educated. Yeah, dude, becoming more educated so you can, what, feel more angry at the world, more frustrated, more sad? Come on, dude. Make yourself happy. F say fuck politics. And just live life. Just be happy with, like, your existence. But how can I be happy with my existence if there are people suffering out there? Because thousands of years ago, you wouldn't even know those people existed. You know what I mean? So don't sit there, don't worry about others, don't like do this, don't do that. Just like sit there and live for you, you know? That's all it is. Ignorance is bliss, exactly. Because I remember when I was 16, right? When I was 16, I remember I was super heavily invested in politics. Super heavily invested. And the only enjoyment I got out of politics was arguing with other people. Hearing about all these problems. That's why I don't watch the news anymore. That's why I don't care or keep up with current events. Because all it does is alert you of the bad shit going on. That's the purpose of the news at the end of the day. It's not to inform people. It's to keep people scared so they always want government. In game, right? That's what you guys have to realize. And that's why I don't let that shit control me. That's why nowadays I wake up in the morning. I do the things that make me happy. I talk to the people that make me happy. And that's all it is. Because that's what life is. Life isn't the future. It's not the past. It's just the present moment. So how would you focus on anything? That doesn't have to do with that, you know? I don't understand why some people are trying... Are so obsessed with trying to make an impact on things like pollution, for example. Because everybody, at the end of the day, is looking for a purpose in their life, right? So, I remember having this argument back when I was 17. With a teacher. And what I told him was that... When you look at philosophy, right? Philosophy. There's a spectrum of something called egoism and altruism. And it states that an egoist is someone who's only out for their best interests, whereas an altruist, right, is someone who's out for the best interests of, like, the community and helping people, right? And I remember having the thought that there is nothing called altruism. Altruism doesn't exist. Because someone is going to sit there and they're going to be happy by having money, let's say. By having a lot of money. So they're going to keep all their money to themselves. But, at, but then there's another guy who's going to sit there. And he's going to be happy when he can help others. To the same level that the other guy is happy with money. But they're both just egoists. They're both doing the thing that makes them happy. They, it has nothing to do with like one being better or worse than the other. It's just them finding gratification through different things, right? And I remember bringing this up with like a teacher at the time and he didn't understand what I was saying, right? He didn't understand, but it's like, 
It's just like a really interesting concept once you actually like think about it. That's why I remember I had a, another teacher, right? And this guy was like an environmentalist. This was a guy who it's like he didn't use toilet paper. His like toilet wouldn't have water in it. I don't know what the fuck he was doing, but he was like obsessed with the environment. He was a vegan, right? And I remember at one point telling him like, you're no different than somebody who will go around and will like sit there and do things like like drive a fucking pickup truck for nine hours a day and then eat four steaks you're no different because you're both just doing things that makes you happy your intention is to make yourself happy and content and one of you feels content with like the present whereas the other one feels content about making an impact but the difference is that one of you has to sacrifice for that right but you're both achieving the same thing and that's why it's like, why bother sacrificing when you don't have to? True enlightenment is knowing that vegans are the exact same as carnivores. That liberals are the exact same as republicans. That both, because what you guys have to understand is that, and this is a concept that I learned about when I was going through my schizo arc. So when I was going through my like schizo arc and I'd browse 4chan every day, right? I came to this like realization because I read this book at one, one point and if any of you guys are like interested, it was called The Cabalion. This is an 80 page book, literally. If you haven't ever read it, this is the only book I'll ever tell you to read. And pretty much what it talks about is it talks about the concepts of like, like of life, right? And one of the concepts that they were talking about is the concept of polarity, right? That everything exists on a spectrum in which there are two polar opposite ends of this spectrum, but that the spectrum in and of itself is the thing that both of the opposite ends are based off of. So in simpler terms, it means that, let's say we look at hot, and let's say we look at cold. These are two things that produce very, very, very different reactions on our body. Heat and then cold. They're two very different things. But what is heat? And what is cold? Well, heat is the presence of heat, and then cold is the lack thereof. So you can achieve heat or cold through through just like presence of temperature or lack thereof. You see what I'm getting at? It's like everything is just temperature. It's just temperature, and then heat and cold is a feeling, right? And it's the same thing if you take a look at something like, let's say, happiness or like sadness, right? Happiness and sadness, what are they? Happiness is the presence of happiness, and then sadness is the lack thereof, or vice versa, right? And another teaching of the Kabbalion was that the universe is mental, right? Everything that we see is our creation, right? So it operates on the, on the like, thought that the universe as a whole is like a brain think of it like a brain because in our brains we have a mini universe right and think of it like each of us as a human being is just a being that exists in the universe of like a greater mind than us does that make sense but what does this mean what this means is that you're gonna be there and since you can create your reality in your mind and we are living in the mind of another being that means that you can create your physical reality through mentality type one if this is making any sense to you so it's talking about how there's like planes of existence right there's physical plane mental plane spiritual plane right and then real people who are like enlightened and who know how to do it can actually make it so that they can turn the mental plane into the physical plane and that's how magicians are made that's how wizards are made people who can create fire in their hands people who can levitate people who can fucking fly and now let's use less extreme examples People who can breathe under, like, not breathe underwater for 20 minutes. People who can go for years without eating food. People who can go for months without drinking water, right? People who can sit in ice baths and feel nothing. People who feel no fear, right? All these people are wizards. That's what you guys have to understand. And every human being has a capability of learning wizardry because it's a very simple thing to understand. 
Do you see what I'm getting at? That's what you guys have to realize. And that's why there were times where I remember I would go in the shower and I would put it on the coldest setting. And all I would think to myself is the water is hot. And I would imagine the feeling of heat. Of heat on my skin. Of sitting outside in the sun and having the sun, the sun's rays. I would think about this and I would remember the feeling, right? And it's like, the thing is, unironically, when you do that, you can put the shower on the coldest setting and you will feel nothing but heat. That is how you can gaslight yourself into being happy, right? Your parents died. Your, your fucking, I don't know, your girlfriend broke up with you. You failed school. You demoted in league. Just tell yourself I'm happy. And imagine what the feeling of being happy is. And then you just won't feel sad anymore. Because the universe is mental. This is what I'm trying to make you guys understand. The universe is mental. And you can physically manifest whatever you want. You want to be happy? You can manifest it. You want to be fucking hot instead of cold? If, like, you're outside in the middle of winter naked, you can manifest it. Like, unironically, just think about it. This is actually true, though. It is. But the thing is, because, like, five people are gonna type, ha ha ha, everyone is gonna think, oh, he's just being a schizo and they're gonna laugh. But they're not actually thinking about the things I'm saying. They're not actually assessing the things I'm saying. The reason why a lot of people are gonna laugh at me and are gonna laugh at the things I say isn't because they find it funny. And it's not because they disagree. It's because deep down in your hearts, you know I'm right. And you agree with me. But it makes you uncomfortable. But what I'm trying to get at is like, you agree with what I'm saying, but the problem is it's such a monumental change of mind that you are unable to accept this as reality, right? And what does subscribing to the mentality I have do, chat? I'll tell you what it does. It can take a fucking fat kid, right? If you believe in my mentality and you understand the things I'm trying to say, it can make you go from looking like this to looking like this. It can make you go from being fucking bronze five literally bronze five and it can turn you into this it can turn a one viewer streamer into a streamer with 830 viewers that's what this mentality does because it gives you control over your life does that make sense and you never feel like you're a victim of circumstance and because you never feel like you're a victim of circumstance you allow yourself to grow you allow yourself to like push through. You allow yourself to grind when most people will look at you and say that you're delusional for thinking the way you do. That you're delusional for having the goals you have. That you're delusional for wanting to become the things you want to become. You want to become a famous fucking musician or, or a singer. You're delusional for thinking like that. How many failed singers are they? Are there? Because these people live in a sense of reality where they can only achieve what they think they can achieve and they think they can achieve what the people around them have conditioned them to believe what they can achieve and the second they find someone with drive the second they find someone that is willing to push past that is willing to sit there and turn nothing into everything it makes them uncomfortable it makes them angry and it fills them with spite because all they can think is what if i had that same mentality that's what you guys have to understand and once you start understanding this i'm telling you it changes everything make your delusions reality i still remember like it was yesterday i still remember like it was fucking yesterday when i was fucking uh sitting there and i was diamond two in league this is three years ago and i remember my brother had this friend and this friend would always call me delusional you're delusional bro you think you're gonna get challenger you're delusional bro he would always call me delusional you want to know what that guy says to me nowadays congrats on your success and that's what you guys have to understand most of the time people are gonna say things to you not because they're saying it to you 
but because they're saying the things that make them feel comfortable about their reality. They're saying the things not that are objectively true, but the things that they want you to believe. Do you understand what I'm saying? And this is a re realization that hit me harder than ever when I had people who were like making fun of my chem tank build that you could see with numbers was one of the best builds ever created. But people were telling me I didn't know what I was talking about, that I was bad, that I was delusional, that I was all these things. And that's why I spiraled into like a depressed arc into like, because how the fuck can you say that to me? And I didn't understand. How can you sit there and how can you say this to me, right? But that's what it is. It's like, how could they say this to me? And then I realized the only reason they say that to me is because they're not comfortable with a guy like me making a change on the game. They're not comfortable with the Yordle impregnator guy who people laugh at for being a fucking low IQ dunce being able to actually create something that rivals them because a lot of the times all these people have is a game and when they find someone that has more than just the game and rivals them in that aspect and then supersedes them in another it makes them so uncomfortable that they hate you that they come to despise you and that's not just with streaming that's not just with me that can be you in your everyday life you tell your friends i want to be a doctor right i want to be this i want to be that dude you're too stupid to do that Settle for being a cashier, bro. You know? That's what they're going to tell you. Because they fear you. It isn't because they're trying to help you. It's because they fear you. And now, I'm not saying if you're one viewer streamer, drop out of school and pursue it full time, right? You still need to be somewhat realistic. But having a goal or an aspiration and always working towards that goal and aspiration is something that you should always do. And once you find that goal that you want to become or that you want to like dedicate yourself to, that's all you need in life to be happy. And no matter what a person's going to say about like, oh, you should do this or do that or do this. You know, I still have my parents tell me that I should go back to school. I had my mom when I was in the hospital tell me don't ever stream again. Right. Just go to school, get an education, get a normal job. My dad still tells me, I can't imagine a guy as intelligent as you is only going to have a high school degree. He tells that to me, you know? And it's like, I'm telling you guys this because it's like what other people think shouldn't matter to you. You can take in what they say, but it does mean you have to follow it, right? You should never detract what you're able to be capable of or what you're able to accomplish just because another person isn't comfortable with it ever. Because that's how people get regrets, you know? That's how people get fucking regrets, I'm going to be honest with you. And that's why when you ask people, right? You ask people who are old, elderly, dying, on their deathbed, you ask them, what's the biggest regret you have? It's always the things they didn't do, not the things they did do. Because they allow others to get in the way. And then when you allow others to get in the way, all that does is destroy you, you know? Your mom was looking out for your health more than anything? No, she wasn't. Not, not when it comes to that. She was... Because uh, I was telling her, like... My stream numbers are going to, like, decrease if I take too much time off. And she was like, oh, who cares? You can always do something else in life, you know?